everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my talk. It's a real honor. First, a little bit about me. So I've been uh, working with computers for quite a while, just random stuff, not only Python, some JVM, some much stuff. You can see my tweets uh, at uh, Noam Tena, and also my blog, uh, and I also work at Healthy.io, which is the greatest company on earth, and also uh, we're hiring, if anyone is interested. Some of my open source work at GitHub, and also uh, we record a podcast, me and my two great friends, Joav Luft, who's also talking here today, and Tom Kaminsky, so I also recommend you to uh, give a listen to that as well. It's a good podcast. So, let's talk about how this is going to work, because it's a bit of a special talk. It's not a normal talk where you see a guy standing around and hacking and stuff like that. This talk involves you as well, okay? So first off, you've got uh, one dude on stage. Now, this is not the entertaining dude. I'm just a homeless person who was paid $5 to be here, but I'm filling in for the original guy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some code puzzles, okay? We're gonna look at them together, have a think about them, and try to guess what the output of the puzzles would be. Now, the most important part of this talk is that you vote. I'm gonna ask you what you think the correct output would be and get a set of answers, but you have to try and think and choose the correct answer. And if you're able also to explain why you chose the answer you chose, even better. But I'm gonna tackle you. So, first rule of the Python peculiarities is don't cheat, okay? You're all very smart people. You're all holding very smart phones and smart PCs as well, or Macs. Uh, you can take the code that's written down here and run it and look at the output, but don't do that because it's not as much as fun, okay? It's a lot more satisfying if you just run the code, but in your head, okay? Now, I'm not saying that if you cheat, you're gonna cry yourself to sleep at night, but it's a lot more satisfying. So are we ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So we'll start off really easy. First puzzle, I think you'll be able to solve this very well. Okay. <laughs> Better? It's from the movie. That's right. So, we initialize a few variables, name, victim, consequence, Inigo Montoya, my father, die, you know the drill, uh, you've all heard it countless times, but we also import uh, the OS package. Now, what happens when I try to run this together with a string pattern? So will we get, hello, my name is POSIX, can my father prepare die? We get, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya, and then I'll be sued for copyright infringement. Will we just maybe get a built-in function, which is called name, or is it maybe an invalid syntax? Who votes for one? <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Who votes for two? Okay, how about number three? And four. Very few brave people voted for four. Now I'm noticing something, not all of you are voting. And I'm not saying I'm gonna punch you later, but please vote, <laughs> this is how it works. Okay, so whoever voted for number one, you are correct, it is in fact number one. But can anyone explain why is it number one? Volunteer, go for it. Very good. So always has a very, Call name. Now the rest of you might be doing something like this at the moment. So let's see what's going on. So first, like we said, we import the operating system package. Okay. Now we're operating it with star, which most of you probably know is not so good. But what happens when you import this? Importing the operating system package also imports dot name, which is, I think, one of the only uh, members which isn't a method uh, in that package. And when you import os.name, it overrides name in Igor Montoya. So, what's the, um, what's the conclusion here? How do we fix it? Well, don't use import star. <laughs> 
So you're getting the hang of it. You understand the format. Everything is good. You're enjoying yourselves. Take a drink, smoke. <laughs> okay, next one up. It's going to get just a little bit harder with every step, okay? So th this will be done in the REPL, okay? Now I assign number of votes to five, okay? So I have a room here of, I don't know, maybe 100 people, and only five of you are voting, so. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and, okay, so we call the function str on it, which outputs five, and then we take another number, five, and call str on that as well. What do you think the output will be? Will be five? Will be a floating point five? Perhaps just a method member? Who votes for number one? Just five, plain old five. Okay, who votes for number two? Floating point five. A few more brave souls. Just the method? Number three? Okay, how about four? Syntax error. Wow, very good. <laughs> Correct, it's a syntax error. But can anybody explain why it's a syntax error? <laughs> because int is immutable? Uh, no, it's a good guess, but that's not the correct answer. Very good. So, when we declare five point, well, basically, the, it confuses the parser because it doesn't know if it's uh, just an ordinary variable or is the floating point. Um, it's like, Bork, I don't know what that is, okay? So you can fix that basically by either adding parentheses and helping the parser. Now I know you Python guys hate parentheses. Sometimes it helps. Or just my take from it is just to prefer the core methods uh, rather than the just accessing direct attributes. It's always more safer. Cool, great. Next one up. It's like I'm being interrogated. You're the interrogator ones, not me. Um, <laughs> okay, so we declare a new method. And it has a default uh, value for the parameter, the single parameter that it accepts, A. And all the method does is just appending the number 42 to the list and returning the list. Now I'm going to invoke that method twice. It won't result in a BSOD but it will result in something else. So who of you can vote for number one? Who has the courage? Nobody, great. Number two, just prints 42 twice. Very well. How about number three? It just depends the integer. And number four? Yes, very good. You all should be proud of yourselves. Very good. This was me the first time I encountered it. <laughs> Why? Why does it do this? Why do I have to suffer? You. Static parameter means what? That, uh, That's right. So, the default parameters, well, they're evaluated only at compile time. And then when they get called over and over again, well, it's not reinitialized. So very good. Good one. Okay. Next up, something a little more esoteric in the language. So I, I import uh, a future, feature, future feature, from, um, from Barry as Fluffle. And I do a very simple assertion and print it out. I think it should be pretty straightforward. Now, try to remember that I'm also trying to trick you. Okay, it could be like, it could be true, it could be false. Who votes for number four? You see, I tricked you, I didn't say number one. Who votes for number four? Who votes for number three, false? Okay, number two, true. Number one, syntax error. Okay, so those of you who voted for number two, that it's true, you're wrong. It's a syntax error. But why is it a syntax error? Who voted for syntax error? You. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
it's it, it's it's almost there. Anyone else? Yes. So that's one serious dude over there. So that's true. So if you look up this pep 401, um, I, I encourage you because it's, it's an extremely funny pep as well. Well, Barry uh, refers to Barry Warsaw, so he's a well-known developer on the core team. And when they exchanged hands over the maintenance, basically over the project, so uh, just I guess as a celebration or just something weird, he, well, he just uh, introduced this fe uh, future, where basically it replaces the uh, this uh, the non-equal sign with the two parentheses. Now, it's silly, I, I agree, but it's part of your language, so embrace it, okay? <laughs> but how will you fix it? So, well, we just simply do a quick replace um, on, on these symbols, or don't use silly modules in your code. I think that's that's a good one as well. Now, Another look into the future. So Python developers, they see braces like, oh, not braces. It's like, it's like vampires on the cross, isn't it? So I'm going to give you a moment to think about it, because I don't know, maybe it's a future feature with braces in the language. Maybe not either. Could be quite anything, could it? So will it print nothing? Will the evaluation just fail? Who, th who thinks nothing will be printed? Number one, no votes. Number two, it will print the future. Okay, great, great, very good. Smart people. How about just an invalid syntax? Because what a brace is. Okay, and how about number four? Nah, you're not allowed to change your vote. Too late. No givesy backsies. <laughs> But that's right, it's not the future, because there's no chance we allow braces in our Python, is there? Why am I wasting your time with this? <laughs> that's true. This is just like another Easter egg, just like uh, the one we've seen before, um, where basically when you try to import this and maybe, I don't know, you trick your other geek friends into thinking, hey, there's braces in Python now, but what you will get in the end is not a chance in the syntax error. It's even got a special syntax error, which is cool. So very good on all of you, very good. And Python V really does have quite a few Easter eggs. A lot of them are very entertaining. So you may know some of them like the hello, which prints hello world. It's a very popular one. Uh, import this, which basically prints the whole uh, kind of manifesto in Zen. Uh, and import anti-gravity, which if you don't know this one, I encourage you to take a look at it as well. It's very entertaining. Next up, chameleon. So we have two lists. Both of them spell out leet because, well, I'm an idiot. And then I try to ex ex uh, extend the first one with the second one. Very simple operation. And then I try to print out the result of that. Now you're all thinking, does it add, does it replace? Is it an immutable? We can't really remember. We didn't have our coffee this morning. What's going on? So these are results, if you want a hint. Number one, what'll happen with number one? Number one, anyone? Number one, good. Number two, just depend everything completely. Great, number three, just contains two lists, a list within lists. How about just an attribute error? Very good. So whoever voted for number one, you were wrong as well. Once more, I'm deeply disappointed. Can anyone explain why it's an attribute error? Yeah, what does the comma do? It creates a tuple, very good. You too, top of the class as well. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> Don't argue. <laughs> the right answer is not always four. 
so yeah, so we have a dangling comma there, which basically creates a tuple out of list A. And tuple has no extend method. So we're screwed, basically. Um, but I'm very proud of you two guys. You also got that. Very nice. So how do we fix it? So, well, use static analysis. Static analysis rules can give you warnings about this thing. You know, maybe you want to create a tuple with a dangling comma, but I don't know why you would want to do that. Um, don't, but you can fix those things pretty easy. You do not have to suffer. Just use good stuff like static analysis. Uh, it's a very educational talk as well. I'm going to give you a lot of takeaways from here. Okay. Johnny Cash. Who likes Johnny Cash here? Very good. So back to the REPL. We, um, we multiply 1 by 2, we get 2. We multiply underscore by 3, we get 6. Maybe you're identifying a pattern here. Then we multiply underscore by 4, which we get 24. Makes sense. Continuing the pattern. What will happen when I print out underscore 5? Ooh, I hear a lot of talking. Is it this? Is it that? What's happening around here? Why did I come to this talk? <laughs> I'll show you the options. So where's the guy that said it's always the error? Now you have two errors to choose from. Let's see you now. And it's not number four either. Okay, so who votes for syntax error? Syntax error, syntax error, no, okay. Attribute error. I'm fooled once again. I just made this talk way too easy. Okay, how about, uh, uh, how about 108? Good. Number 30? Very good. It is number 30. So cool, very cool of you. This was me. I love Python, I really do. But can anyone explain why it was 30? You in the back. Uh huh. Very good. Yes. So basically, we're going to uh, break this down. So what's going on? So this version of Python, well, we access the last returned value. Well, simplifying the, uh, the behavior is accessing the last returned value. But the return value print is none. So uh, Python tries to be smart, and it's going to access the last uh, uh, returned value, okay, which is 6. And then you're going to get 30, because it's 5 multiplied by 6. Good? All good? Very good. Now we're going to get down. It's time to throw down. So I initialize a new list. And then I append to it every element, OK, is divided by an integer from the range of 0 to 9, but multiplied by itself plus 1. Then I'm going to iterate over all the results of every element in the list and print them out. I'm going to give you another minute. Who needs a drink? Right, time's up. 
Okay, let's see the results. Number one would print almost as expected, right? Wait, no, it's not expected at all. What happened to the multiplication? Hmm. What's going on around here? Okay, so who votes for number one? No one votes. Number two. No one votes for number two. Number three, a syntax error. Number four. Okay, uh, that's not on the options, but who watched, um, who watched The Wire, the, the series The Wire? So, shit. <laughs> now most of you might be the, just going through like this. So what's going on? Let's walk through this, okay? First, you notice that in the multiplication, okay, we're doing a unary, unary operation, which is not valid. There's no unary operation in Python, but Python does not fail, it just ignores. So basically what we're inserting into the first list is the square of every element of the list, correct? Good, great, so we're gonna have uh, yeah, you know, just a series of the squares, which will result in this, option number one. But once we iterate, we're not actually iterating over a variable which we created. We keep on assigning every element of the list to the last index. So what would it look like during iteration? First, we assign index 9 with 0, then we assign it with 1, which is the second element, that's right, number 4. But by the time we reach uh, the, the iteration of index 9, index 9 is already initialized with index 8 from the previous iteration. So I'm going to print 64. No one is laughing. <laughs> Okay, but great. So that, that was the last puzzler, okay? So um, I hope you all enjoyed yourself. Uh, just some key takeaways from, from this talk, which I hope you all enjoyed, is number one, always write readable code. Don't make your coworkers suffer and don't make yourself four months from now suffer as well. Well, because we're not uh, you know, always ideal and we're not an utopia, sometimes code can't be readable. If you have any hacks or tricks or whatever you have to do, at least document them just for future reference. Um, use static analysis and a good ID. I personally prefer PyCharm and uh, JetBrains don't pay me anything. It's just because I love it. And last but not least, RTFM. Wait. If you've got any feedback or if you've got any peculiarities of yourselves, uh, feel free to, to send me them, and if not, well... <laughs>